Okay. Now you see DNA is a double helix. It means there's two strands. This helical structure I'm describing to you is a protein structure, and it's not two strands. It's one strand. This helical structure that we see in proteins that arise from these close interactions is called an alpha helix. An alpha helix. Okay. These interactions are between amino acids that are about six to seven amino acids apart. It turns out that if we go one turn of the helix, one turn of the helix like this, amino acid number one, amino acid number seven up here, those R groups are not too far from each other and they interact. Okay. There's another repeating structure that we see that is a secondary structure, and yes, an alpha helix is a secondary structure. Another repeating structure that we see is a secondary structure is called a beta strand. So you can write the name, and then I'll, I'll explain what it is to you. A beta strand looks like a folded curtain. It has pleats. It goes up, down, up, down, up, down. It's kind of like a helix, except for it's just pointed. Up, down, up, down, up, down. It doesn't rotate. It just goes up, down, up, down, up, down, like that. Okay. So it's like a folded, pleated uh, curtain. If we put a bunch of beta strands together, one here, one here, one here, we make something called a beta pleated sheet because it's a sheet of these things. And if we put a whole bunch of those together, we make silk. Silk largely has stacks of pleated sheets, one on top of the other on top of the other. If you're wondering about an example of an alpha helix, your hair, real good example. Okay? Your hair is full of alpha helices. Now, I'm going to confuse you and tell you now that there's two examples of places that we see those. And you say, oh, when I think beta, beta strands and beta pleated sheets, I'm going to think silk. But then I'm going to tell you that virtually every protein has beta strands and or alpha helices. How does that work? Okay. That we'll have to understand when we get to, to tertiary structure. But silk and alpha helices, when we find proteins that have only those structures, okay, we call them fibrous proteins. So hair is a fibrous protein. Silk is a fibrous protein because the only structures that they have essentially are those either alpha helices or beta strands. Your fingernails also have a lot of alpha helix in them. Okay? So they're called fibrous proteins. So fibrous proteins have only secondary structure. That's the bottom line of what I'm saying. Fibrous proteins have only secondary structure. They don't have other structures for the most part. Now, that may be a little confusing to you, but when I start talking about tertiary structure, I'm thinking hopefully that it will. Yes? But they all have primary structure, right? Every protein has to have primary structure because that's the sequence of amino acids. Okay? So fibrous proteins only have primary and secondary. They don't really have tertiary structure. Yes, Matt? Well, just looking at, at, at the primary structure, the primary sequence, I can't tell what those interactions are. I actually have to look at it to see what, what, what shape it assumes. Because the shape it will assume, it won't assume uh, under all conditions. So, for example, if I uh, put this in boiling water, I break all the hydrogen bonds, and hydrogen bonds help these things to form. So now it will be a straight chain. It won't, it won't assume a shape. Okay? So it depends on the conditions. Okay. Other questions? Yeah. This might be what you just said, but so for the most part, the sequence of the primary structure dictates what secondary structure it forms? Yes. Primary structure dictates secondary, primary structure dictates tertiary, and primary structure di dictates quaternary. We'll talk about all four of those. Yeah. So primary structure tells everything. That's why if we change the sequence, we may really change the properties of that protein because it's now it's going to have new shape possibly. Okay? 
Yes. That's a good question. In general, uh, I like to keep it simple and just think about that as having either one or the other. And I said they have only secondary, but they have secondary and primary. Everything has to have primary structure, but yes. Okay? Okay. We'll talk about another one, uh, collagen. I mentioned it earlier. Collagen uh, is an interesting fibrous protein. And uh, I'll say a little bit about that uh, as I have a little bit more time later. Okay. Okay. How about a joke? So we've covered secondary structure. Let's talk about a joke. This is my duck joke. Anybody heard my duck joke? These, these three guys die and go to heaven. Okay? And they get up there in heaven, all right? And they hand them their wings and so forth and said, Whatever you do, don't step on a duck. And what the heck? And they, they, they walk in, and everywhere they look, there's ducks walking around, just walking around. What a, this is weird. This is dumb. This is heaven. I can do whatever I want to, man. I was good. I got to go here. So they're not as careful as they need to be. And within a few hours, the first one steps on a duck. And all of a sudden, sirens go off, and the, there's this massive police force that comes down, and they grab the guy that steps on the duck, and they said, we told you not to step on a duck. And they bring this big, mean woman and they chain him to her and say, you're going to spend the rest of eternity chained to this woman for stepping on a duck. Oh, man. I mean, those two guys got the message pretty quick, you know. We're not stepping on any ducks, right? Careful, careful. Tiptoeing around heaven, making sure you're not stepping on a duck, not stepping on a duck. And about a month later, one of them accidentally steps on a duck. Same thing, only worse. Sirens are louder, the police force is bigger, and they've got this bigger, meaner, uglier woman, and she's got a frying pan in her hand, and he gets chained to her, and you're going to spend eternity you know, getting this from this woman. The third guy is just, there's no way, man. You know, this wasn't what I expected at all, and so he's, he doesn't even want to move. I mean, he's just kind of standing here. He doesn't want to do anything, you know? And, and he's really good, and a whole year goes by, and all of a sudden, when did the sirens go off? And he, he hasn't done anything, you know? And they come down, they get this beautiful, gorgeous, voluptuous woman. And they chain him to her. And he says, wow, he says, this wasn't what I expected. And she says, teach me to step on a duck. <laughs> okay. Maybe not. Now, everybody pictured an alpha helix. Now you get to see what an alpha helix looks like. You can see the interactions now that every several amino acids, there are R groups that stick out that can hydrogen bond with amino acids that are a few amino acids away. And these hydrogen bonds help to stabilize the secondary structure, in this case, the alpha helix. Okay. This is a structure of some proteins that have within them mostly alpha helix. Okay? So you can see these alpha helices. These are proteins I would not describe as fibrous proteins. Why? Because they fold. Fibrous proteins just go on and on and on and on and on and on and on. Okay? Fibrous proteins continue on. They don't have folds in them. Once they start folding, we have something we call tertiary structure. So tertiary structure arises as a result of folding that's happening, and we, but we still see secondary structure. So th this protein, in this case, uh, one of the subunits of hemoglobin, has <coughs> primary structure, it has secondary structure, and because it has folds in it, it has tertiary structure. Some of those folds will involve prolines. Remember how proline caused the bend that I said? Proline is going to disrupt an alpha helix. Okay. Okay. Beta strands. There's that pleated sheet that I described to you. And you'll notice, don't worry about the C and the Ms that they have on there. That is these things. Don't worry about that. Okay, but here's that pleated sheet that I described to you. Uh, I'm sorry, beta strand that I described to you. Here's the sheet 
and we start arranging them one on top of the other, on top of the other, on top of the other. That's what a beta sheet is all about. Individual beta strands that are arranged one next to the other, next to the other. Well, come on. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. There they are in another form. And motifs. I'm not going to talk about that. I do want to talk about collagen. Collagen is a really interesting fibrous protein. Now, by the fact that I said it's fibrous, you know it's got secondary structure. You know it doesn't have bends. Okay? So we can think of, fi of collagen as going on and on and on and on. It's a fiber. It's a very interesting fiber. It has not one strand, not two strands, but three strands that are interwoven with each other. That's the structure of collagen. Okay? So collagen has three strands that are intertwined with each other. Just like braiding your hair, the, tra the strands of collagen are uh, intertwined with each other. Now, why do I tell you this? Collagen gives us a, some very interesting examples, and from a nutritional point of view, it gives us a very important lesson to learn. Okay? First, if we think about making a rope, okay? we think about a rope. A rope consists of fibers that are intertwined with each other, and by intertwining the fibers with each other, we make a rope that is stronger. Right? That's one of the reasons for intertwining fibers and making a rope. Same thing with our hair. If we take individual hairs and pull them apart, they come apart pretty easy. We braid them, we've got, it makes it harder to pull them apart. Right? Now, we think about those fibers in a rope, okay? If we didn't have some way of connecting the fibers to each other, then they're not as um, strong as otherwise. They can sort of fray, they can come apart, they can do their thing. There's not a connection that holds them together. So if we just sort of loosely lay them there, they will come apart. That's the, uh, that's the sort of idea that I want you to have in your head. Okay? Make sense? So what I'm describing to you is what has to happen in the making of collagen is not only do I have to have the individual strands, but I need to con connect the individual strands to each other and to other bundles of individual strands. So I start seeing networks of connections between them. Everybody got that in their head? So I'm thinking of those connections. Okay. Well, how do we make those connections? Those connections arise as a result of a modification of the amino acid proline and lysine. The modification involves putting a hydroxyl group onto each one. Now, on Friday, I talked about modified amino acids. And one of the modified amino acids that I described was hydroxyproline. I said, remember how the modification happens after the protein is made? The hydroxyl group gets put on after the protein is made? The hydroxyl group gets put on to proline as a result of action of vitamin C. It's the only vitamin that's involved in the catalysis of a reaction that we know of. That is, it actually participates, it's actually an intermediate in the process. Vitamin C. Now, why is that important? That's important because those hydroxyl prolines are the things that join together. The connections between the fibers happen as a result of bonds that form between those extra hydroxyl groups on the prolines and lysines. So we start seeing connections, and the connections require that hydroxylation. If you do not hydroxylate, okay, what you make is a very weak form of collagen. Okay? A very, very weak form of collagen. You have a vitamin C deficiency, you don't make a very strong collagen. Right? This was discovered back in the um, days of the pirates. When the pirates went out on long shipping voyages, they didn't have food preservation methods, so they took meat, and they took meat that was salted and meat 